Thank you, everyone. I'd like to call this uh, meeting to order the Commission on the 13th Festival of Pacific Arts and Culture. It is now 2.31 and the meeting is, we have quorum established? Yes, we do. Everybody, please be patient. This is my first meeting. I'm running. Chair Ka'ana Ana is sending his regrets, but we are going to follow Mua um, and keep him abreast of all of our discussions. Um, Commissioner Lam, could you please introduce Mr. Manu Boy for the Vehenna? Mahalo, Commissioner Salaha. I feel like he needs no introduction, but uh, I want to mahalo Manu Boyd, a friend and classmate, former kumuhula of mine, and uh, just thank you for being here with us today and to share your uh they handle with the rest of us. And so I turn it over to you, Manu. Okay, mahalo anui. So, um, um, aloha kako o vau ke ia o Manu Boy, uh, ua hanau ia vau ma wai alai kahala. Uh, eia ke noho nei ma mae mae nu anu, hana vau ma ke kula o kamehameha. My name is Manu Boy. I was born on Oahu in Kahala, but really raised in uh, Wailupe, Aina Haina, live in Nu'u anu, and I work for Kamehameha. I, I, I want to be clear though, because my my uh, four minute vehena or opening is going to probably be more like eight, possibly eight and a half. Um, but I want to acknowledge uh, again my, my classmate, um, uh, Jamie Kuuhaunani uh, Okalani Mei Ling Kawai Lum. And she uh, had called me uh, to open this meeting. And I know we have Kamehameha people and we have other Ohana who are on this, uh, in, in this particular uh, group. But I, I'm, so I'm doing this not as, as Kamehameha, uh, uh, but really on behalf of Jamie and, and Dibet. Uh, Kamehameha Day was what really struck me as a, an opportunity to say a few things. And so I'll start with that. I'm gonna talk a little bit about some history and hopefully not bore you to tears. Um, and then end with a with a with a mele oli, uh, which is a, a mele inoa or a, a mele that honors Kamehameha the Great, which is called uh, Kalani Nui Mehameha. June eleventh is not Kamehameha's birthday. You know, I mean, I, I can't tell you every on the news, on in the media, in the newspaper. In eighteen seventy one, Kamehameha the the fifth, La uh, Kapu Aiva. Uh, wanted to have a holiday celebrating his uh, kupuna kane. Because things were getting a little, a little wild in town. And so he wanted to use his own birthday, December 11th, but he wanted to have outdoor events and you know, festivities and, 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 and this and that. But because it's, it's, it's ho'oilo, which, which is the, the winter months, lots of ua, lots of uh, makani and all of that, he bumped it up six months forward. And that is how we get June 11 for Kamehameha Day. In the birth chance of Kamehameha, he is uh, born at, at the time of, of, of thunder and storms in the, in the time of Ikuwa, which is more like uh, October, November. So for all of you, I, I don't mean to be, uh, I, I don't mean any disrespect to anyone on the committee or in our, the leadership of, of the world that we live under, but let's stop calling this his birthday. Kamehameha Ekahi is renowned in, in, in our island history in Hawaii and throughout the Pacific, not just the triangle that, that, that Westerners drew a line and called that Polynesia, and then there's Micronesia over there, and Melanesia, he is known, and his ancestors, and all of our OED ancestors come from all over the Pacific. And so um, what I want to emphasize today is uh, Ho'okipa. Ho'okipa is hospitality, and that is a, a foundational pohaku in our, in our heritage. The melee I'm going to end, end up with in about six minutes and 42 seconds is titled um, um, Kalani Nui Meha Meha, written by Kamehameha's aunt, older relative, um, Ululani. 
But uh, why I say that is that in this opportunity, in 1985, I was a, a, one of the performing artists, a, a dancer. I was the youngest member of our delegation for this festival that was supposed to have been in Nomea, New Caledonia, but they had civil war, imagine that. And so six months later, it was relocated in um, Papeete, Tahiti. And so I, I understand this festival. What I want to uh, throw out to you, and, and, and I picked that Oli that I'll end with now in five minutes and 42 seconds, is the, the references in that mele to Ho'okipa. Our job, our, jo our kuleana, on behalf of our kukuna, is to treat people who are coming in with the utmost respect and uh, you know I, I know there are budget concerns and there are uh, 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 you know uh, all kinds of uh, other uh, logistics and, and kamea 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 we all know the history of this festival Hawaii wasn't even considered a part of, of the Pacific Island you know people in the beginning but because of people like Diki Takabine, Makwana uh, Di Silva, Kamehameha Schools, uh, State Foundation on Culture of the Arts and others, we, we got in. And not only did we get in, but we are also now hosting. And this, so in, in our culture, uh, and, and I'm, I, I know pro pretty much everybody knows this, the Mea Ho'okipa is the host. And the Mea Kipa or the Malihini is the visitor. So both of those entities have responsibilities. You know, and it's as simple as that. So I'm not, I'm not trying to grandstand or, 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 or make this or that, but in the mele that was composed either in uh, 1789 or, 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 or 1790 or so by the, the poet uh, chiefess of, uh, of Hilo, who was the daughter of Papa, uh, Papa Ika Ni'au from Maui and, the, uh, and also uh, High Chief Mokulani from Hilo. Her name was Ululani and she was a relative a generation or, or two above Kamehameha. And she welcomes him in as he's beginning his campaign to bring the islands together. Remembering now that when we talk about Hawaii in the Pacific Moana Nui Akea, Pacific context, is Hawaii has, we, uh, and Kamehameha, everybody knows that name, and everyone knows the name Hawaii as well. And so Ululani, the high chief is from Hilo, who was an uh, outstanding poet as well, she, in, in, a, in a relatively short melee, which is going to happen in about three minutes and 22 seconds, it, it, uh, it calls out elements of Ho'okipa, you know, we talk about Ho'okipa as the visitor industry and, and all of that, you know, uh, but I mean, this is really foundational in Hawaiian culture, welcoming people in and particularly relatives. Every single person, I don't care if they're from the triangle or the trapezoid or the circle or what, they're all our ohana. And so therefore, as the male Ho'okipa, the welcomers, we have a uh, responsibility and they are the Meakipa, the Malihiri or the Ohana that are coming here. It needs, and we can talk about budget and logistics and all those kinds of things, but I want people who are not really uh, that ma'a or kama'aina, that, that familiar with how things work in our world. And it's taken a lot of people and a lot of time just to even get that festival here. So Ululani says in, in 1789 or, uh, or 1790, she says, e komo ikahale o ke enter the house. She sees the canoes coming from Kohala, coming into Hilo Bay. And right where Sig Zane's shop is, that's a, a little bit to the, the Puna side, is called Kaipalawa. And a little bit more, right, right at where Suisan, the fish market, that's called, that was a, a coconut grove called Pio Pio, and that's where Ululani was. And she calls out to him, uh, and so on. But the elements of hospitality that come from either 1789 or 1790, uh, 
Enter the house of, of, of royal affection. Um, bathe and refresh yourself in the waters of, of, of Ponahakione of spring. We have a responsibility as Oivi to not to uh, our Lahui, our, our Kayulu today, our ancestors. We're bringing people in. We have to feed them. We have to house them. We don't have to bathe them. You know what I'm saying? But, but we need to uh, try to maybe, uh, and maybe this is just a, 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 just a bit of grandstanding, but I wanted to offer this because Jamie asked me, Kamehameha Day is not his birthday. This is about Kamehameha, and this is about our kuleana as Hawaii. Not for our budget people, the analysts, and all that, to our ancestors. Again, I'm one of I, I Yes, I do work for Kamehameha Schools. I'm a cultural consultant, but not today. Today, I am. Um, uh, I was a 22-year-old, uh, little Hawaii-looking little, little little kid, the youngest uh, member of the delegation who went to Papeete, and I offer as our vehena, uh, no kamehameha. And remember, as leaders, if you want to lead this aina, then think what would kamehameha do. And if you don't know, Google. And the Hawaiian the kind of search engine, go ugly. <laughs> anyway, let's take a moment. And uh, this is the end of my day. And I, I think I'm sure Jamie will tell me I went over time. Eya Kebele na Ululani, composed by an, a relative of Kamehameha the Great, challenging him to pull the islands together, to get a grip and pull it together. That's what this melody is about. Oh, <laughs> Mahalo, Mr. Manu Boyd. I think I speak on behalf of all the commissioners when I say no one tells a story quite like you. So mahalo for that. Mahalo, Anui. Keep on my mahalo to Jamie again, and uh, I wish you well on a uh, productive meeting. Mahalo, Anui. Ahui ho. Mahalo, we Mahalo. Mahalo. And next we have, we would like to welcome, we have a brand new commissioner uh, in attendance today. So we'd like to send our official welcome to Commissioner Maynet Ani Benham, um, PhD from the University of Hawaii West Oahu. I'll give you a, a little intro in, in two minutes. Um, so she was actually the inaugural dean of Hawaii Nuiakea School of Hawaiian Knowledge. She was my dean when I was getting my master's degree. Um, and then she moved out to the University of Hawaii West Oahu. She has a heavy background in tribal colleges and education, native point education throughout the United States, um, internationally and in Hawaii. Um, so really she needs no introduction, but here she is, Dr. Benham. Okay, would you, you can say your aloha. <laughs> mahalo, mahalo. Thank you, everybody. It's so good to uh, be with you this afternoon. And I am honored to uh, be serving along with you and to contribute in, in a good way. So aloha and uh, mahalo for inviting me to join you. Well, right now it's mahalo for inviting me to join you. Thank you, Commissioner Benham. 
Okay, we're gonna move on to agenda item number two, public testimony. Uh, there was no public testimony received, but if you are a member of the public and would like to uh, provide testimony, please unmute yourself and you can provide testimony here on any of the agenda items. Also reminder um, for participants, video is to remain off and only commissioners are to stay on screen until it's time. If you would like to testify, you can turn on your video as well. Seeing none, I'm going to move on. Just, just a caveat to people who are watching. We will also open it up for public testimony before we close at the end. Okay, so number three, we have approval of the May 17th, 2021 minutes. Uh, approved minutes were emailed to commissioners already. Uh, no changes were requested as of this time. So I would like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes as um, set. So mm -hmm. moved. I'm gonna oh. say th thank you, Commissioner Lum. No second. Thank you, Rep Onishi with a second. Um, we are in discussion. Okay, seeing none, uh, let's go with a roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Lum. Aye. Commissioner Benham? Aye. Commissioner Onishi? Aye. Commissioner DeSilva? Aye. Commissioner Wongkalu? Aye. Commissioner Bento? Aye. And Commissioner Kyohokalole? Aye. Mahalo. Motion carries. Okay, so moving on to agenda item number four discussion of festival director. So initially in the last meeting, we had discussed um, taking a vote, but in the absence of Chair uh, Ka'ana'ana, we are going to engage in discussion and perhaps we can put forward names that people would like to put up for discussion. We can do a lot of detailed discussion, but we're gonna, we're not, I'm not gonna call a vote today without um, Chair Ka'ana'ana. So with that um, being said, uh, just another note that I was given, this will likely not be acted on in 2022 as no funds are currently available. So we'll have to work on fundraising uh, before we can actually hire a festival director. So we'll just keep that in mind as well. And with that, I'm gonna open the floor for discussion. Uh, Commissioner Sala, I have a question. Yes. Um, in our discussions today, are we looking to to um, flesh out more of the kuleana and responsibilities as um, as stated already in the manual for the festival director, or are we looking to also put up nominees? Uh, we discussed a little bit before that we wouldn't necessarily nominate, maybe we would just do discussion and start to throw names out there really so that we can all look back at the minutes and be prepared perhaps to vote on the next, you know, or do a little bit of discussion and vote at the next meeting uh, when Chair Ka'ana'ana and hopefully all the commissioners in, are in attendance. But like you said, I think it would be good to also discuss if we need to sort of, you know, narrow the scope at all. I think that's also part of this discussion today. Uh -huh. So as the new kid on the block, can I ask the other commissioners to briefly share their perspective of this particular position? Um, I know that you've had conversations in the past, so it would, it would help me tremendously to, to get a, a little bit better perspective on, on where some of you are coming from. I would like to, if I could, impose upon uh, Commissioner De Silva, if she would, to talk a little bit about festival directors, since she is our um, the person who has been involved the longest with the festival, and I think you bring a lot of good perspective for us. So, if you wouldn't mind, sort of, you know, giving, sharing a little bit of your perspective, we would very much appreciate it. Sorry to call you. <laughs> 
I was kind of expecting it. Mahalo. Um, festival director is pretty much the one that's supposed to um, make sure that all of the the chairs of the different committees follow through on their kuleana and that their uh, committee people under them also do their work. So the, as I understand it, the direction would come from the commission on what the decisions we make on what, what we want them to take care of and how we want them to do that. But the festival director would actually be the one to make sure the work gets done. Um, another big uh, responsibility of the festival director, along with the honorary chair, um, festival chair would be to be the, the spokespeople for the festival when we are going to go out to do public information, um, requests for funding, um, make presentations to potential donors or sponsors and those things that they would have to have a pretty very good knowledge of the festival in general, but also how Hawaii would like to present themselves and how Hawaii would like to um, to ho'okipa our relatives from around the Pacific. Um, it's, it's an all encompassing position. It's a big position. Um, but the festival director isn't meant to do any of the work, but just to like keep the matrix and make sure all of the, all of the, um, committee chairs, uh, work is being done in a timely matter manner. Um, make sure that the, um, the scheduling and deadlines are set and met and yeah, and the rest of you can add to that. Thank you. Mahalo. I think um, what Commissioner De Silva has been saying, correct me if I'm wrong, is so the festival director is essentially the, the executive director assuring that um, with guidance from the board, uh, all of the things on the Kuleana matrix are finished and done, done well. Right. And that, and so that's like according to the um, festival manual, but we also have the ability, we, the festival manual is meant as a guide and not a directive. So it's a guide to help us so that we, we're starting with some kind of structure to begin with, but we can tweak it to our liking. The other thing um, to remind, to, to uh, let you know, um, Commissioner Benema, and to remind all of us is that we are the first country to use this festival manual. So the um, council that I sit on, the Council of Pacific Arts and Culture, where this festival manual came from, um, the overseeing body for all the festivals, is really looking for our input on the, on the festival manual to see what worked for us and what didn't. So that um, every time there's a festival, the council can make adjustments to the festival so that it, it works. It's, it's an actual working document that can help the countries. Um, so we, it's a guideline, but we can make changes to it as we see fit for us. Thank you. I'll throw out, um, more of a question. How important is it for us as a board? to have someone in that festival director position who is ma'a to one attending festivals and to organizing because festivals are really kind of big deal. And, and I think we kind of need someone in that position. The person that takes, that takes on that kuleana really needs to know what they're doing with it because that will help alleviate a lot of the pressures on us as a working commission. Um, and make our jobs smoother, I think. Not necessarily uh, lighter, but smoother for sure. Um, 
Mahalo, uh, Commissioner Vento, uh, for bringing that up. I would concur that <clears throat> in both cases, actually, for the executive director type position, as well as the honorary chair type position for the festival, they both become ambassadors of our people and our islands. They will wear the mantle of Hawaii and therefore they must conduct their affairs in that manner. Um, one of the most critical elements is some familiarity with how the the feel and the, the flair of the festival how to <clears throat> through perhaps previous experience at other festivals uh, to be able to anticipate or to be able to know how to see and and not necessarily need any you know any kind of guidance right out the gate but really just to take it and run. Um, that's the kind of leadership that we will need. Also, um, once again, as an ambassador of, you know, uh, of Hawaii, whether you'd be taking care of the more mechanical type things, making sure that everything is flowing right, making sure that um you know anything from a through z is is being followed through or followed up on or just making sure that it flows um that's that's for that director festival director um but that parallel to the position is the the other side the cultural ambassador to be able to if and when there are moments of perhaps challenge or um, some sort of engage that that honorary chair also is able to intervene and to show up uh, on the behalf of you know our festival the i'm sure that many of us clearly know the workhorse is not always the front person at the front of the stage, standing up and able to quell the audience. But the workhorse is the one, you know, going to, to whip everything into shape and make sure. Now, ideally, I know that there are, you know, there's got to be a just a few people out there, uh, but there are a very rare breed of people to be able to do that. So, um, yes, Malo to Commissioner Rental for saying that, but... Um, those are my uh, brief thoughts at the top of my head when it comes to the, the level of leadership and the, the kind of leadership style that those two individuals need to ideally have that sense of aloha. And um, as Manu said, I, I have to give props to Manu at this time. <clears throat> Manu said everything that Kumu Hina wanted to ever say to any body, I meaning entity body, about our duty. He said it. And I understand. I, I've personally struggled just because I, I know the inception of this. It's three o'clock. Oh, thank you. I know that this commission is a result of, you know, our, our leadership that has brought us this far. But with what Manu said, Manu, um, Manu laid it out there. It doesn't matter, you know, at, at the end of the festival's day, <clears throat> the matter of numbers, the matter of money, the matter of all the logistics, the matter of all of the technical stuff but our kuleana as hawaii and as kanaka whether we are ethnically kanaka or not is 
to treat everybody coming as if they were noble guests at our invite and pretty much our expense. And as someone who has been uh, privileged to be a delegate representing Hawaii at two former festivals, the fifth and the sixth, I know how true this is. Each time we were repeatedly throughout the entire festival duration of two weeks each, um, we were royalty. Royalty. We could not want. And, and everything was always, always <clears throat> provided for us in true Pacific Island way. And therein lies our dilemma, fellow commissioners and general audience, is that um, we're not only having to reconcile the things that come to the commission in its current fashion, but we're having to reconcile that part of, for some, cultural loss and, and degradation at least, because not all of our people view this in the same way and not all of our people feel the same way about why we must do what we will need to do. And I am certainly not one to mince words about this. And I will not, as one of your current um, voices here on this, uh, on this meeting, but yeah, we must, we must never allow the, um, the Western trappings, the bureaucracy, the administrative stuff, and all of these kinds of things to be an impediment that would prevent us from, um, from being of service and and from representing uh, our <clears throat> you know our islands and our ancestors manu was so right it's our ancestors we must now demonstrate and i cannot tell you for in my own personal career representing hawaii is essential because the rest of our family out in the Pacific, they retain the integrity of their identity and who they are. And it is our Hawaiians whom, depending on who it was, we have struggled very, very much. That's okay, because together we will make it. And Hawaii will rise. Ea mai Hawaii nui akea. Mahalo. Mahalo, Commissioner Wong Kalu, for that passionate um, a reminder to all of us. I, I'm, I'm thankful to all of you for providing uh, information for me. Mahalo, Commissioner De Silva and Commissioner Bento. So I do get a, a fairly, you know, cogent idea of what we're looking for in a director besides someone who is, as um, Commissioner Wong Kalu talks to, someone who lifts all of us, uh, represents all of us to the Pacific and the world, absolutely, but also someone who is quite prepared. It's a tall order uh, that we're asking of anyone to take this uh, position, a good, com a good communicator, someone who's transparent, someone who has the management and the fiscal skills uh, to be able to do this, someone who can think out of the box, and certainly somebody who could corral all of us commissioners. Uh, that would be also a, a really good um, uh, attribute of, uh, of, an, of an executive director. So mahalo for that opportunity, Commissioner Sala, to ask that question and to get a better perspective of what my fellow commissioners are looking for. Any other commissioners have burning comments to add to this discussion on festival director? Okay, so I was thinking initially that we would possibly throw out names, but I'm thinking perhaps we're not ready yet for that. So um, I'm gonna move us on to agenda item number five, which is gonna be discussion of sort of the parallel position of honorary festival chair. Um, 
Yeah. So I think in the last meeting, what we discussed is that the executive director, I mean, the festival director would very much be the administration and the doing of the work and the festival chair is in charge of the diplomatic relations. Uh, one of the really important things also is fundraising. So I open the floor for discussion on honorary festival chair. I'd like to repeat what I said at the last meeting, and that is I, uh, <clears throat> I would prefer to select the festival director, if we're going to have a festival director, before we select the honorary festival chair. I can't call all this. I can't call all this in that the, um, I, I think that the, the current needs um for the level that we're at right now are best facilitated by the working director type person and um as hawaii as as a delegation uh begins to assemble then <clears throat> you know it's it's at that time that uh what uh, uh you know the the, the more honorary chair and and uh, at least that public relations ambassador type is is going to be able to you know really get into swing and to to help build to build the minds and hearts around this to to help teach to help um reinvigorate to and to be that wind beneath the sails of the canoe because that person will call to the kupuna themselves to be with us in Hawaii. Mahalo, Commissioner Wong Kalu. If there are no objections, then uh, I'll be moving on to the next agenda item. Commissioner oh, Bento. Question. Um, do we have a time frame as to when we would like to try and start putting up some names for nominations? And when we're looking for a festival director to to be appointed, I know you mentioned um, not having budget right now. We probably wouldn't make that selection until 2022, if I'm not mistaken. So is, yes. if we're looking for the next six months, then we're trying to figure this out so that we can get it moving by 2022, yeah? So um, according to staff, as soon as we have money, the first priority is festival director. Yeah, so basically we can't really move forward. Well, we can move forward and some of the decisions, but we're gonna need that person to make things happen. Um, so as soon as possible would be the answer. Unless of course, uh, uh, Vice Chair or Co-Chair Salah, um, <clears throat> that uh, a person could potentially come in service uh, in that capacity, but could possibly be employed, you know, to provide for them. Um, and, and, you know, the, the agreement would be that they would simply avail themselves to whatever is needed. Uh, am I correct in this understanding? Yes, I believe that was part of the, the last meeting discussion was that uh, mm -hmm. in other festivals, the government subs sort of subsidize a lot in terms of staffing um, in such a way. So that I don't think mm -hmm. that's off the table at all. Mike, okay. mahalo. Right, and I think we also talked about um, if there were any types of service in kind or organizations that might have someone who has that capacity who would be given over to this work but they would still be paid by their their uh, employer. I think we talked about that as well. Yeah, if, if we had um, some type of, uh, you know, if there's organizations out there that perhaps cannot um, donate monetarily per se, but they could donate someone physically to, to do the work, that could be a, a, a part of that too, right? Okay, thank you, Commissioner Bento. Um, 
if no one has anyone else left, anything else left to say, I'm going to move on to agenda item number six. Okay, and we are going to do discussions of revisions to the festival budget. I'm going to invite Commissioner Lung to share priorities and suggested positions for 2022. Mahalo. So I did take a look at the budget that we had put together. Uh, actually, um, really, this is a carryover from what we had been looking at from the very beginning. Um, and as you, you know, um, based on the discussion of our last two agenda items, it really does come down to uh, having a festival director. I think um, it's kind of difficult because I, I to uh, look at all these positions when I, um, I believe that really a festival director would want to help shape the, um, you know, the organization of uh, the people that are going to help to manage this. So I think really, um, although, and just focusing on the 2022 uh, budget, we had, um, I, it looked like $3 million because a lot of that is operational, but of that, over half of that, uh, about half of that was for staffing. And I think realistically, um, we would, you know, need to start with a festival director, uh, uh, an assistant and, and somebody to help raise funds. Um, those are probably the three uh, key positions that we need to start with. Um, I, you know, we don't have any resources for 2021. So I think we have to look at um, starting that in 2022. Um, and, uh, you know, as has been brought up, unless we do find uh, someone who um, can serve as festival director without us having to raise funds and that person is supported in some other way. Um, I think that that would be our priority right now. Um, and uh, just looking at the numbers that we have in the budget right now, uh, it, that's just around $200,000 for um, three of those people. And that's, you know, not even sure uh, if that's a proper level uh, for someone um, of the caliber we would want to um, bring on as a festival director. But um, so that's just my, my comment in terms of looking at our most immediate needs and our, I guess, our initial priorities in looking at trying to raise, uh, raise money. I know that uh, Commissioner Ka'ana Ana and I um, talked about um, trying to put together an RFI or request for information to try to look for a fundraiser <laughs> and look for creative ways to find someone to help us raise funds and um, also um, have them get some sort of you know, compensation for it. Uh, we have not been able to sit down and do that yet, to be honest. Um, um, but we know that it's um, at the forefront of the things that need to be done, so. Thank you, Commissioner Lum. Do any comments. other commissioners have comments? If there's any other, uh, I, I'll just add in, if there are any other um, priority areas that anybody sees, um, then please, you know, um, bring that forward. But that's from just my own perspective and in um, talking with some other people that are more familiar with organizing festivals as far as what are the our immediate priorities um, for getting um, things going you know, other than all the work that each of the commissioners are doing right now. <clears throat> uh, I believe that, um, my previous conversations with uh, Commissioner Bento, you know, um, I know Commissioner Bento and I will sit down soon and and uh, possibly put a name or two forward 
um, or at least have a conversation about somebody we think that might best serve. And that's just a real preliminary type thing. But uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Bento uh, will work on uh, perhaps sitting down sooner than later. Um, you know, when I think about all those positions, but about the positions that we're looking for, we, we definitely have to have someone who has um, a, a bit of charisma, as we said, yet yeah, to be able to corral everyone as, as Commissioner ben, Benham um, so eloquently spoke earlier, but also the, the wherewithal to have the, um, you know, to be cognizant and aware of how to to work between delegations and between governments because that's so important and then to have a very clear understanding a clear cultural understanding of of, of just who we are and how, who we're representing and then how we all work together in the pacific and um and if we're looking for someone who could actually uh, have who actually comes with um, resources such as maybe manpower or or things like that then we need to be I know we need to be selective about who we put into that position or who we ask to be nominated because I, th I think that's important too I don't think it's it's um, appropriate for us to nominate people who have no idea they're being nominated so for sure we should probably have those conversations Yes. Because you should only put forward names of people who truly are interested in and can carry that kuleana um, for, for both positions as their festival director and honorary chair. Because I don't think honorary chair was being seen that way initially as being someone who would actually have to do a lot of the, a, a lot of push and pull. And, and also, uh, like when I heard, for me, the bells and whistles were going off when you're talking about fundraising because that's going to be our biggest one. And if it's not fundraising the, the, the money, then it's being able to have audience with people who can help us do what we need to do. Who will say, yes, we'll, we'll back you guys because this is a great opportunity. Not just for the festival delegates, but for Hawaii. We have to, as Hawaii, see the value and importance of being good hosts. And not just the small group of us that's in the commission or in this field right now, because we all know we're, we're this, this is what we all do, whether it's through education or it's through uh, representation in our legislative um, branches, this is all work that we do. And so trying to find that right fit, I think is super important and that we have those conversations because you find the right person and people will rally around that person when the kahia is made. And that's what we need and that's what we know we want. Eo, polo le iloa. Maybe maybe this is the appropriate time. I'm not sure, but I I think this is really similar to the conversation we had in the last meeting about the chair and the director. And I just wanted to share that as we're having this discussion, uh, I'm trying to think of the person who would be able to do all of this. And to a certain extent, we're looking for a unicorn because this is a $25 million event that we need to put on and then, and then that person needs to rally. But you know, the other thing I remember we talked about last time is that this is a team effort and that we all are gonna bring our own um, resources and we all have our own kuleana. And so I do agree that, you know, director first because uh, it will be based on who the director is that we fill in. Uh, you know, we, we, I think we should follow that person's strengths and then supplement accordingly, right? So you do have to have, and, I, and for me, the, I think ultimately 
the number one responsibility of the director is going to be inward looking. It's going to be making sure that we are facilitating an event that properly represents Hawaii. So that's a lot of administration and logistics and accounting and management and organization and stuff that I'm not very good at. And then there's the outward part of it where we all, if necessary, I think collectively can, and, and, and a chair, right? But, but I don't think the chair can do administration. I don't think any of the individual commissioners can do logistics and sign checks and execute contracts. It's gonna have to be the director. So that's for me in my mind, one of the necessary capacities of whoever we choose is they have to be able to carry the water on the administrative side and um, first, right? And then we, the, we collectively will have to figure out our kuleana to support so that the, you know, there's a, there's a fully functioning and comprehensive organization built around that person, right? That's, that's kind of the way I was thinking, so. Even more, I want a unicorn thing. Does anybody have particular mana'o regarding more like a traits and a skill set so that as um, staff starts to put together a job description for who this person would be or what kind of things we want them to do, we have uh, directions to a direction to go toward? Keeping in mind, there are a lot of traits listed in the, in the manual, but if we want to add anything specific. Let me just tag Commissioner Onishi on this one just to start off. Um, you know, this is a very interesting discussion because <clears throat> I've never attended a festival. Uh, I brought, I was brought in at the last minute for the lap for when the festival was supposed to be held as a representative from the House of Representatives. Um, so, you know, I wasn't in the discussion when the original concept was done three years ago in the hiring of what we are, what we would look for in someone to run the festival. Um, it seems though that from what people are saying that we are headed in that same direction someone who has had experience attending festivals, someone who understand what the festival is, someone who uh, understands the different countries and their representation and some of the, in, uh, the in, in interest, interest, some of the uh, differences between the different cultures and, you know, uh, some of even the politics of the different countries. So um, I think it's gonna be very hard to find someone that fits or, or has those skills and resources and experiences. But in my mind, I think the festival director and the festival chair need to really complement each other. And I would agree with Commissioner De Silva that the commissioner, uh, the festival director has to be involved in who the festival chair is going to be because that has to be a very tight relationship and they have to depend upon each other, um, which I think, uh, you know, the, the, we as a working commission uh, have taken on some of the oversight responsibilities to ensure that we're not headed, or we don't go down the same path we did a few years ago. So um, I think we're at least the ones that are here who experience that have a different uh, 
perspective on what we're looking for and how we are going to be involved in this whole process of establishing uh, our, the festival in 2024. So, um, you know, it's, it's something I think that we need to take our time. We obviously need to raise some money. And I think there are some of us who can begin to work on that so that we get some seed money up front before the end of this year so that we can seriously consider the positions that we need in order to move forward. And I would agree with Commissioner Lum that our fund, uh, fund development manager and our grant writer, I think, are two other important key components. And maybe a grant writer is someone who we can try to see if there's any community resources out there that would be willing to help us on a voluntary basis begin that process of soliciting grants. Mahalo, Commissioner Onishi. Um, thank you, everyone. Oh, Commissioner Zasova. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair. Um, in, in my opinion, the festival director doesn't have to ha hold all the knowledge. The festival director has to have people right under them who hold all the parts of the knowledge that the unicorn needs to have. There is no one person who can do everything. And the festival director doesn't really need to be, um, to have a, a complete understanding of the details of the financial side of this. That's the finance um, chair's position. So the festival director has to make sure, has to be a person who can select and work with and listen to the all of the people that are going to be under the festival director who are going to be in charge of the different sections and departments and if that's the commissioners then that then the festival director has to be able to work with the commissioners and get whatever information they need that they don't have from the commissioners or from those people who are going to be in charge whoever our finance director is going to be whoever the logistics person is going to be, whoever the housing person is going to be. And I don't, in my opinion, we over, the, the commissioners oversee that, but the commissioners don't do the work. There's going to be a committee under the commissioners of the people who actually make the phone calls, get all the information so that they can provide the information to the commissioner who is in charge of that kuleana and the commissioner then brings it to the commission to vet, to accept, approve, make suggestions, whatever it is. And the festival director is the one that makes sure all of those pieces happen. So the di festival director, although, yeah, it'd be great that the festival director can have all of that EK, but they have to be sure that they have, if they're the festival director and they're selecting people under them, I think we've set it up that the commission, the commissioners, we're a working commission. So the commissioners have these different buckets of kuleana and then under the commissioners, you're gonna, you're gonna um, select people on your committee. And some of you have three or four or five or six different sections under your kuleana bar. And you're gonna have a, a chair of each of those sections right like like if you have vaas you know you you got the biggest one um uh commissioner bento because you got the programming which involves you know you do have opening ceremonies and all of this but your opening ceremonies because that's part of the programming even though kalani is taking that on you're you you know he does it all but it still comes under programming and so you have all of these different sections in your programming you need lots of different heads of those different sections and the festival director will help the commissioners to follow through when when you guys are busy but you need follow through with your committee chair and your subcommittees then that festival director is the one who's going to put the you know put the pressure on 
to get the work done in the timely manner that we need it done in order. This is a slow process because the commissioners have to approve of everything because the buck, because we're the ones who are going to be held responsible. So we don't want to put our responsibility, you know, we're, we're going to trust some of, some of the decision-making to people who aren't us. But if we give over too much to people who aren't us, but we, but we're the ones who are going to be held responsible. We, we need to have, you know, not like micromanage control, but we need to know what the parts are doing. And because we're a public commission, everything has to, has to come before the commission and, and be discussed. Um, but we also don't want the commission to become the bottleneck, right? Or the cog in the gears that keeps this from moving forward. So to me, the festival director needs to understand all the parts and they don't have to come with that knowledge, but they have to be willing to learn, willing to learn, willing to talk to us, willing to listen, willing to, um, it, 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 the festival isn't going to be what the festival director wants. The festival, festival director has to make happen what the commission wants and what the committee chairs want and what the subcommittees want. So that's the collective of how we're going to create this, right? So anyway, that's just my mana'o on, on the festival director. I don't want us to feel like, you know, it's going to be this, like this, this unicorn that we're never going to be able to find. Um, but it has to be, you know, very organizational skills, detail, pay attention to detail, follow through, to, to the result that we all want and we'll be happy with. Yes. Mahalo, Commissioner De Silva. I'll take, Commissioner Benham, did you have, I'll take one last comment from Commissioner Benham on this agenda item. Yeah, so, you know, I, I really appreciate uh, Commissioner Onishi and Commissioner De Silva for, you know, kind of putting that all together. Um, is Let me just throw out a suggestion here I, because I, I don't know if this is, the way things are done or not. So I'll just kind of throw it out here. Um, it, you know, I'm looking at pages 76 and 77 of the manual, the festival director, and we've all been talking actually to many of the different points that's in the manual itself, except the part that says fluent in English and French. But, uh, um, but you know, in all those components, we've been talking ab about that. Uh, would it be possible to actually have uh, uh, a commissioner or a couple commissioners during the interim between this meeting and the next meeting come up with a proposal for this group to actually um, kind of take a look at and, and, you know, take it apart, put it back together again um, of what a festival director or a festival team uh, might look like? I'm going to defer to Margaret on that question. Margaret, can you answer that question? Sure, that would be just fine, Commissioner Benham. That's a great idea. So as a new kid on the block, if you all, you know, um, trust that I could probably get a team together to put something together and put something in front of you, I'd be more than willing to do that. After all, that's kind of my job, right? That's kind of what I do. Um, just two commissioners though at the most, Commissioner Benham. I, Thank yeah, you. myself and. And any volunteers? <laughs> Why don't we put this um, via staff to a vote because Chair Ka'ana'ana might want to be the other person. So why don't we let that um, discussion happen through staff over email. But thank you so much, Commissioner Benham for bringing that because I think that's going to help us to move forward. forward. Um, Thank you. So in regards to this agenda item um, number six, which is the discussion of revisions to the festival budget, I take it we don't have money. So we gotta, we're got to we going to fundraise as our priority and then be able to hire someone whose job description is going to be worked on. Um, so mahalo. Uh, I'm going to move on to agenda item number seven, which is the venue forms update. Uh, I have listed here, we are still pending forms on the Hawaii Convention Center. Um, it's my understanding, however, that on their website that we were sent the link, we could see all of the information that we needed. We're also pending forms from the State Foundation of Culture and the Arts. Uh, the city and county, we just got our forms in uh, this morning, so they should be able to be disseminated to uh, the group a little bit later. Uh, Ilihia, did you have um, 
Any updates, any other updates for us regarding venue forms? No updates for me at this time. Mahalo. Mahalo, Ilhia. Okay, so I'm going to move on to agenda item number eight, which is discussion on festival venues for the following events. Um, starting with number, well, letter A, the Va'a ceremony. We are open discussion on possible venues for the Va'a ceremony. I would like to um, put something out there. Um, when we were working on the Va'a ceremonies for 2020's FESPAC, what we came to realize, very well, for me particularly, what I came to realize quite quickly, and this was outside of my programming, this was actually part of my work because Kamehameha Schools was helping to, um, to sponsor that event. Uh, it, it, we were gonna make it happen, but it, it, does, in, um, it does encompass many cross sections of different groups having to work together. So site, when we're choosing Va'a ceremony, we thought, oh, Ke'ehi is a good fix. But I will say that Ke'ehi also means that you have to work with uh, Coast Guard and you have to work with airport and you have to work with all these different bodies just to go from one space to the next space because you're crossing from one jurisdiction into the next in the water. And so where's DOCARE in this? Where is DLNR in this? Where is this? In there's a lot of different components. So um, if we're going to talk venues, which I think is totally fine, we just have to think of, of those kinds of stuff when we're discussing what types of venues might possibly work for a va'a ceremony. And then also putting it out there that both Hiki Analia and Hukulea currently will be, um, are scheduled to be away from Hawaii in 2024 because they'll be embarked on the Moana Nuiakea voyage. And so we did also discuss the idea of having the smaller va'a take um, part in this, but also maybe even our canoe clubs. So just kind of putting that out there for when we discuss venues. Mahalo. And I want to add to, to what you said, Commissioner Bento, if I may. Um, in the, the last um, five festivals that I've been to, the va'a ceremonies were all, um, uh six eight mans you know whatever the country has they're they're um not voyaging canoes but they're traveling they're you know traveling within their um their moku um canoes and it is a it's symbolic we, we don't have to make it like you know i mean i'm happy i'd be really happy to have hikiana lia and the there are all of the other, there's so many of them, smaller canoe, um, va'a, sailing va'a, participate. But I think before we can really decide in the venue, we have to decide on, or somebody has to decide on what the ceremony is going to look like. What is the purpose of it? And then how are we going to do it? Because I have, most of the time, what we've done is they have accommodated um, the head of state and the head of delegation uh if they choose to so we're invited to meet somewhere get in a va'a and be paddled in by the um the the hosting delegation onto a beach where we get off and then there's a ceremony there there are some times where we have a va'a welcoming ceremony where none of us are on the va'a we're all on the shore and it's a symbolic arriving of the va'a from the host country with the people from the host country. And once they come ashore, then there's a stage set up and it's usually speeches and gifts and things like that um, as a symbolic for a ceremony. So been in from not being on a va'a to being on a va'a and traveling a few miles from one location to another. So I think how we want this to look will might help in help us in choosing, selecting the right venue for it. Um, you know, one of the things that occurred uh, in preparation for the 2020 uh, FESPAC 
uh, I think the participation from other countries that we were hoping uh, didn't really materialize. Uh, one of the other things is as we search for different venues and different opportunities, uh, we were going to end up, I think, uh, having the Va'as come in to uh, the uh, Alawai Canal and having the ceremony at the convention center because I think it was going to be more of a symbolic type of uh, a ceremony versus uh, one that involved a lot of people at that point. Um, I would agree that we need to determine what kind of a ceremony we're looking at. If we want to invite participation by the delegations or the heads of uh, delegations, then we need to make that known early so that we can prepare to have a sufficient quantity of, uh, it could be, you know, just, just regular outrigger canoes or whatever uh, available for these people and a place to meet and where we're going to go to. So I would agree that that has to be a priority in terms of looking at this particular ceremony and how we're gonna do it. Same with all the other ceremonies, right? Uh, who's gonna participate, how extensive it's gonna be before we can figure out venues to hold the event at. And the other thing that I forgot to mention is, um, I only know the last five festivals and all of the well, welcoming ceremonies have been done at sunrise. So we actually go, to, the delegations go to the, wherever the arrival is gonna be in the dark. Like we get picked up at like three in the morning, but that doesn't mean we have to do it that way. I'm just saying that's what's been the norm for the last five festivals. Kumu, in Palau, I remember we were there in Palau. Um, it was morning, it, but I don't remember being there at the, the crack of dawn because we didn't have to, but I think we got there when it was already lit. Um, yeah, you guys did, but we were yeah, there. We were there earlier because you guys were the dancing contingent. Yeah. and you Yeah, we were the there when it was still dark and you need a flashlight to see where you were going. <laughs> Why don't I do this? Let, let me throw out a couple of venues that we did consider for 2020. That way we have a ball game of where, what we're kind of looking at. At first, the main idea, because we had just come off of the 2017 return of Malama Honua Voyage, that's where the idea of Ala Moana Magic Island came to be. Now, the, the idea of having the va'a go up Alawai and, and, and dock on the side of uh, the convention center was because PBS had just had a gala event there the following May. That just getting Hokulea up the Alawai Canal and getting it back out was a to do. And we knew that that probably would not be the most, the best situation for a, a arrival ceremony. And one of the things I can remember Mehana saying is, you put OEV by the water, they're going to want to be in the water at some point. I don't think we want people in the water at the Alawai Canal. So then Ala Moana Magic Island didn't work at that time because they were preparing for huge renovations and construction. We would not have the kind of accessibility, safe accessibility for our communities coming whether they be delegates or the community proper. Then the, the next two venues that were discussed was Kualoa and Ke'ehi. And how we came to Ke'ehi was because the METC, where Hokulea and Hikianalia live, is literally right across the way. But even just getting from METC and crossing over to Ke'ehi, that would have been a to-do. But we were willing to do the work and we actually got the work done. So in terms of what venues really work on Oahu for welcoming 
um, va'a, whether they be voyaging canoes, our smaller ohana like ka'anehuna moku, or eala, or namahoi, or makali'i for that matter. We gonna, we're going to need a place where, because those canoes can come in as far as they come in, and if it's too shallow, they'll drop anchor and they'll send, we can send in our crews on smaller canoe. But I think it's more important if we really want community involvement, that we reach out to our community va'a families early. The, the canoe clubs and all of those other gang reach out to them early enough, <coughs> which I think kind of my two years might be sufficient timing where they can actually come to the beach. And, and those of us who know what summers look like in the Va'a community, um, beaches are full. And then they're trying to bring all the canoes up onto the beach and then down into the water. There's all kinds of stuff that go on there. So we had discussed early on for the 2020 Fest Pack to engage Okra. And that engagement was, was never fully realized. And that's how it turned from trying to engage with, with, with all the community groups to just going with the bigger va'as that are part of the va'a ohana. So I think if we can look at those venues, those four venues, is there any other venue that could possibly meet the needs that we would have? Ceremonially, we need a place where everybody can come onto the land and be able to house all the people who are gonna be part of that ceremony. And then we need to be able to feed them and we need to be able to provide enough parking and enough um, facilities for them. So those kinds of stuff we have to think through as well. But those were the four main venues that we discussed and we purposely took out um, Ala Moana, Magic Island and the canal for those big construction reasons and also the tidal changes and how, it might, how difficult it is to get the big vase underneath the bridge. It's a, it's a lot of planning and they have to plan a, to the season, they have to plan to the tide. It, it takes a bit of doing. Not that it's impossible, but just a, um, some perspective, I guess, when we're looking at venue. So if we go with just the um, the racing canoes and the practicing canoes, um, is Ala Moana a possibility or Makaha or Kailua? Um, if nothing else is happening on that day, if it's just the Va'a ceremony on that day, then I think it would be nice to consider our um, our communities, communities outside of Honolulu proper. Yeah. That's okay. used to having lots of uh, Va'a regatta and things like that in their community, like Kailua, like Waianalo, like uh, Nanakuli. They yes. have big races. Yeah. Nanakuli, Maili are over there. Yeah. And then the, and then the other would be transportation for delegates mm -hmm. and whoever you know um making sure that we have enough transportation and that we have space for our communities because i think it's important for our communities to feel part of this whole thing and this might be one of the ways we get community buy-in right and um and also on the on the feeding part i don't think we have to be really too concerned about that because what usually happens is we go there really early, we have the ceremony, and then there's a bus schedule to pick us up and take us back to our um, housing venue to eat our to eat our breakfast. And we could provide a snack, you know, a little grab, grab and go snack until they get back for breakfast, but it's not supposed to be an all day thing or a half a day thing. It's not supposed, the, the festival village is the place where all of the hanging out and staying and eating and going to things. But the Va'a ceremony is just so, supposed to be like an hour, two hours max. It's not everybody gets to perform and everybody gets to, it's the Va'a come in, the countries are welcomed and um, whatever gift exchange and whatever um, uh, speeches from dignitaries and then we're dismissed. 
-hmm. So we don't want this ceremony to, we want it to be symbolic, but not really long. We knew that um, going into planning the ceremony that we weren't looking at a very long ceremony, maybe about an hour half total. But we also knew that the timing for each of the va'a to come in, it's not like we park our cars, can't just swing right in and take a turn, yeah? They have to tack their way in, then they have to go to a certain area, then they have to be able to, to. so I think when we're choosing, as we're thinking about the venue, maybe we can just put it up here for, for notes that we're, we're considering certain venues, yeah? So would we want to still consider Magic Island at this point? Commissioner Salah, do we know if there's going to be still major construction happening at that time in the Alamoana? Construction is finished. Uh, the parking lot is all reopened. Yeah. So we could consider Magic Island area? Yes. One. Okay. Then our next, do, do we even want to put in there Alawai Canal? Personally, I say no. Okay, thank you, Ma. I say, no. I say yeah. a big no, no, Aole. That's rough. It's a big Aole for me. Mahalo. And, and um, Ke'ehi, do we still want to consider Ke'ehi? Because Ke'ehi is a regatta site. The canoe clubs do use that site quite often. And they're ma'a to that. And it's great. Right. Ke'ehi is a site. I want to interject on this subject of Ke'ehi really quickly, that um, the city and county has been using portions of the parking lot for homeless outreach. So the parking is going to be, I'm not sure in 2024 how it will look, but Currently, that was one of the issues that was brought up by DPR is that the parking is going to be, you know, much less parking at Keehi. Okay. Even with um, parking, say, on the grass, yeah? Okay. And then um, alternative sites. Como, um, Commissioner De Silva, you said maybe Kailuang? Um, maybe any other? Maybe Nanakuli or Maili, that area? Maili. Mm. <laughs> that long stretch of beach, right? That's a long stretch of beach with a whole lot of coral. Yeah. The pop out there is rough. Yeah. Yes. Have, have you considered have you considered Kalia? That that that's where they did the IUCN. We went to that ceremony. I think smaller in scale than what perhaps we're talking about now i do like the idea of going out into community i think it would be amazing to do it in kailua the parking would be a real challenge but it would be it would be really nice to be on on the, our side of the, the thing, island the thing with the parking is you would reserve the parking just for the dignitaries and um the community people that have to be there and you would use all the schools in the kailua district as parking areas and bus everybody in, even the community, unless the community walked in. Mm. And and that's exactly the way it's done in all the other countries. So it, it's, when when Hokulea returned, Oha bus, we caught the bus from right. windward. Right, there was to, no parking. To Magic Island. There was no parking in. So and when, when um, Hokulea came to Kailua, there was no parking. All the parking was blocked off, and people had to shuttle in. We used this. Uh, we used all the schools and the uh, um, the parking in Kailua Center, the parking structure at Longs, and all of that parking, and we bust people in. I think that's a great idea. Even if we were in Kalia, um, Commissioner Kehokalole, if if we were there, we could talk to the uh, Waikiki area schools, and and think of utilizing similar um, opportunities for for community to be able to participate. I would rather my Kiki end up in the water at Kalia than at Alawai. So, mahalo everyone for your discussion. I'd like to ask Commissioner Bento, because you're sort of our resident expert and you know in charge of Va'a ceremony, would you consider coming up with a suggested list of infrastructurally what might work? And I can, I can um, once you get your list, I can sort of look at the parking and all the logistics in terms of all of the city venues uh, to help that. And then we can present a list of like what the possibilities are. Uh, just so we can sort of you know point our discussion that way um okay i think commissioner Bento started off a really good um way to continue our discussion which was what was on the list for ava ceremony um in 2020 opening ceremony main festival village closing ceremony so we have a point to start um so i'm going to turn it over to the commissioners who were here in terms of ava ceremony what was on what was on the table and do we want to consider the same venues or add new ones 
um, how we came to the AVA ceremony discussion actually was a conversation at UH West Oahu that was held between myself, um, Kamanao Crab, Kamanao Pono Crab, um, Aaron Salah, and I believe Judy Oliveira. I think um, Commissioner Benham, you might have been in a meeting right next door. Um, and we were talking story about having an AVA ceremony out at Kukaniloko. to bring in not just our the political dignitaries, but the, the Ali'i families from around the delegations to welcome them into an Ali'i space, a space that is is appealing uh, to our kupuna in, in such a magnificent way. And we thought um, the proposal was that Ava ceremonies would happen right around nine o'clock-ish in the morning out at Kukaniloko, um, followed by, um, a lunch that at that point our Ohana at UH West Oahu was willing to um, host at UH West Oahu so that the, the delegate leads and the Ali'i families that come with those delegations from around uh, the Moana Nuiakea would be then taken from Kukaniloko to U the University of uh, Hawaii West Oahu so that they could kind of see some of the places in our community as well, instead of just being kind of stuck within Honolulu proper. And that oh, was, that, was that the only um, Kukane local was it for 2020? I believe so, yes, unless there were other conversations had otherwise, because anything else um, pertaining to AVA and ceremony might have been um, within delegation proper's and their own community members that live here. Mahalo. Not to say that the discussion is finished, but just for us to, we'll move on to the next and just keep Kukani Loko in our um, front of mind for us. Okay, next for opening ceremony and keeping in mind that va'a ceremony and opening ceremony do not happen on the same day, right? So is it va'a first and then opening ceremony? I assume, right? Yes, okay. on the original. And I believe right now, um, even though uh, when we looked at the dates, we're looking for va'a ceremony to happen the weekend prior to that opening week. We think that the delegates would be there. I think that's like the 1st of June, I believe. Mahalo. Just as a thought. Mahalo. Um, the opening ceremony can happen on the same day as the va'a ceremony. The va'a ceremony is usually in the early morning, and then the opening ceremony usually starts in mid or late afternoon. And normally, just in the last five five it's been on the same day and you know but it doesn't have to be it's it's whatever we want okay but the other thing to consider is that we have a shortened um festival time yeah. so putting it on the same day will give more time to other for other things to happen because nothing officially happens until the opening ceremony so, um yeah because all, the other festivals are most of them were um two weeks I think Palau got cut, either Palau or American Samoa got cut to 10 days. I forget which one it was, but most of them are about two weeks. Okay, mahalo for that manao, that's super Yeah, important. it's just something to think about. Okay, for opening ceremonies, what what venues do we have on the list? Or in, in discussion? Um, we had Iolani Palace. Nice. And um, I believe that we're we're still leaning towards that. Awesome. Any other mana'o about that? I believe that is the case, and I thought that a venue form was either already submitted or being worked on. I think um, Paula was. The venue asked form for was already turned in. Yeah. Thank you, Malia. Yeah. Wonderful. Mahalo. Okay, I'm going to move on to main. It's festival. four o'clock. Oh, thank you. Main Festival Village. So as far as venue nominations we had for Main Festival Village, uh, there was Kaka'ako. Um, there was the Hawaii Convention Center. And there was Magic Island. 
did I miss any from our previous venue sites that we we put up for nomination? I have a question, Commissioner Bento. Is it is it Kakaoka Waterfront Park? Was that the suggestion? Kakaoka Waterfront. Okay. Yes. Right. Thank you. Um, it, eventually, I, we got we got to just the convention center. Call me, Commissioner Lum. Oh, I, I wanted to just clarify it because I thought it was it's that um, block um, between. I don't even know what the streets are. No, it's actually not on the waterfront. It's that. Um, Next to the, it's Coral it's Street. The, like Coral Street. Coral and Coral Street and whatever the, it's Coho bordered by. Or something, yeah, or Cook Street or Coho, something like that. It's actually right on Malka Alamana, of, yeah, and it's yeah. on Alamana Boulevard, Malka of the uh, waterfront it's part. It's the right middle part, Commissioner Salah, right before the waterfront where the amphitheaters are. Mahalo. Okay, perfect. And how about the closing ceremony? Things we already suggested or we want to add or subtract in preparation for a vote eventually. I believe the closing ceremony site we were talking about and discussing at first was uh, Kapi'olani Park, yeah? Aye, right, Pololei. Did we ever discuss Main Festival Village being at Kapi'olani Park at all? We did, um, but because we have to go through the commute, the, um, uh, the, yeah, the whatever <laughs> was like, mm, kind of the last choice. Yeah. Because, okay, so my brain is working all the time. Please okay, bear yeah. with me. If the main festival village was say at Kapi'olani Park, the opening ceremonies could still be at Iolani and we could have that parade if we wanted to, or it could be at Kapi'olani on the same day as say a va'a ceremony at Kalia. Then it would make, to me, make a lot of sense for us to have a closing because that's where all the activity, the main activity of the festival would be happening, but it is an outdoor venue. And so one of the things that we thought was really good about having the indoor venue at the convention center, and I think um, if chair were here, he would remind us also that we do have some funds encumbered there already as well. Um, was that the security part would be a lot easier to handle because you would have the ability to shut down the convention center and everything would be under house. But I also remember Commissioner De Silva bringing up the importance for some of our cultural um, ohana to dance on earth. and not be dancing in an elevated space. So those are some of the main things that we uh, considered. Please, anybody correct me if I'm wrong. <clears throat> I remember that um, in those sentiments and, and um, I guess this is the result of being but one in a generation who had to grow up always in the middle, you know, in, in this sort of um, always a compromise of being true to our Kanaka ways, but also understanding, you know, the creature comforts of more Western oriented being housed, being inside, controlling the weather, security, etc. There's validity to both sides. Um, however, as someone who um, you know, when I was teaching actively in the community, K through 12 and doing different things, and as a former delegate, there's, there's nothing that can replace being a part of the elements because it is through us being upon the land, being able to feel the Makani, being able to have, whether it's the sun, uh, how do I say it? The training that I came from, if it's beating, scorching, hot, hot sun, sit out there and you're not moving. It's not about you. Suck it up. 
because we're here and we're all here and everyone is gathering for this purpose. If it's cold, 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 and, and everything that I'm saying, I've had to be one of our Hawaii ambassadors in the hottest of hot and in the coldest of cold. The wind was blowing, it's freezing. I remember being in Aotearoa with, with little amount of clothing on and the ice chilly winds holding a kahili and stand there until it was done. You know, and, and being in Tahiti, raining, 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 pouring rain. And that's okay because you stand there because it's, for, for those who may not understand, it is about the physical, but it is also about the convening of, of our ancestors with us as well. And they come on their time, they come on in their own way and their own space, and they show themselves through us being connected to the land. So, yeah, if I if push comes to shove, I'm going to vote with the more um, grassroots kanaka, keep it outside kind of um, environment because that's where the magic happens. So you know. We have time. I, I would be interested in understanding the protocol that Commissioner De Silva alluded to, because I think there's a Waikiki Association on top of the neighborhood boards that would probably need to be engaged. But you know what, they do the Okinawan festival there. The Kayapuni used to do, I can't remember the name of it, but we used to go to Punanaleo, okay. right? So wow. to a certain extent, um, I'm willing to to step forward and take Kuliana on doing whatever necessary protocol because we have enough time, and I would I would be happy to join whatever contingent would need to be put together to make a presentation to whoever in the community is appropriate to discuss our proposals in the appropriate interval. You know, there's more than enough time to engage a neighborhood board and say this is coming. We would like it to be this place because we've collectively agreed that it is appropriate. You know, and if anybody want to, you know, oppose us after that when they let Okinawan Festival go over there every year, you know, then we'll, you know, then we'll deal with that. But I, I just would like to uh, share that. Can I just piggyback on that manao that Commissioner Kiyohokalole just shared? I think. Yes, I know we have monies encumbered at the Hawaii Convention Center. But I, th I think this could be an opportunity, given the time frame, because we have the time, to engage our community and say, community, would you be willing to help put things together so that we can have this experience? Because what it'll come down to also is, if we, I, I'm not trying to play the budget, but at some point, we're going to have to think that that the more the the quicker we get out there with our community, we have a real strong, clear messaging with our communities, no matter if it's the Waikiki community or elsewhere. And we talk about this festival that's coming, and we engage them and tell these stories. You know, short snippets of experiences that that people who have been, um, which is a really small group who have been affected by the festivals in their lives. Because at the bottom line of things, people are going to want to know, well, what experience am I looking forward to be participating in then, if I do participate in this kind of event? And so <clears throat> I mentioned that because I think pretty much all of us here would agree that we would love to be outdoors, because that is our element. And so how do we make that dream become, come to fruition? Keeping in mind all the little things that need to happen, right? Like the city and county things that need to, to permits being pulled and all of that. And then how late are we gonna go? Because if we're gonna go late, then that means we're gonna have to have lighting and then sound. And are we gonna build, we gotta build out all the hale to have the festival village outdoors, build out the stage so we have a stage area for people to be on. But really looking at 
what is it that we're looking for? How much of what? And then how much is our community willing to support this event by rallying around the building of this festival village, if you will? I think that might help inform really, really where it goes. And then if we want to talk about um, proximity, then the better venue is not Kapi'olani, but it's going to be Ala Moana. That would be the ideal venue if you're looking for outdoor festival village because it's so close. It's in walking distance to the convention center where all the panels and the demonstrations and other things are happening. Then we're creating this space, this corridor of cultural learning for those 10 days that we have the festival running. Can I just add a little bit to that? And, and I, I do want to talk more about this at another time, but um, I, I think everybody knows who's been on this commission that my first number one choice is Magic Island. For the Festival Village, it has been from the beginning. And when we had to postpone this, I feel like it was a blessing because we weren't forced to go indoors into the convention center. We do have monies encumbered there, but we have a lot of events that are going to be there. And the monies that are encumbered are going to be spent in all the events that are going to be necessary to be there. Um, Magic Island, like, like Commissioner Bento said, is within walking distance of the convention center. You're going to have a lot of uh, attendance on all areas because of that. When they want to get out of the hot sun, they're going to go to the convention center and see what's going on over there. So that's kind of what's going to draw people there. Um, definitely, I, if there was, if the convention center was the only way we could do this, then I might say okay. But I, I think there's, I think we we can do this outside. And I just want to say that I, I just received uh, an email from um, Lynn Martin Grattan, who uh, organized a 1990 uh, Smithsonian festival here. And they, clo they had Magic Island for two weeks to set up, to have their, their festival and to take down. And it was the whole community was involved and supported it. it we, they got approval for it. And so there is a precedent for this. And I think, like Commissioner Kyoho Kalole said, is that we have time. If we make the decision soon and we work on it together, we have time to share what this festival is about. And that this is, I truly believe this is, this is the, the one time, I know in my lifetime it is, but I don't think Hawaii is going to have another opportunity to do this in the future. I really don't. Um, and we have an opportunity to, to, to be the Hawaii that we say we are, to be the Kanaka that we say we are, and to do things right, no matter what the barriers, no matter what the hurdles, but know that this is the best choice and we're going to find a way to get it done and to do it that way and and engage the entire community and get you know inform everybody and get them excited about this and that that what a blessing it is for us that the festival is coming here we don't have to go and spend all of our money to visit to try to visit every island in the pacific the pacific's coming here and we can experience the true people from all of these islands and they're they're way of life and their languages and their skills and their um, artistry and their EK and all of that. What a great opportunity. And we should be taking advantage of that. And, and yes, we do at some point have to look at the money and the bottom line, but I really feel if we're behind this and we put it out there that the money is going to find us. It's going to find us, but we have to step out there first and, and, and believe in this so strongly that we're going to, we're going to initiate it and start it, start moving on it without funding. 
Mahalo. Commissioner De Silva, would you prioritize then um, venues would be um, either Alamo, uh, Magic Island and Kapi'olani Park? Would be second, yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. I, I would kako'o that as choices for our closing ceremonies. No, for Festival Village. Ah, yeah. So, so wherever the Festival Village is, so, is that where we want the closing ceremony to be? Um, I don't think that's a great idea. Oh. <laughs> I think closing ceremony at Kapi Oleni Park is a good idea because you're going to close down the festival village. The last day the festival village is open is probably going to be the evening of your closing ceremonies. And, and you, you want a, a area, an open area for your closing ceremonies, not the, not within the festival village. Um, I suppose we could do it at the Festival Village. It's never been done that way in my my experience. But like I said, we, you know, it's up to us. If we want to have the closing ceremonies at the Festival Village, then let's figure, let's do it, make it work. I'm fine. I'm fine with it either way. But the Festival Village, uh, I think, yeah, my first choice would be Magic Island, and the second choice would be Kapi'olani Park. Um, and, and, and I know there's a lot of worry about Magic Island, but there, there's ways to mitigate it. And so, you know, want to share more of that information. Um, want, once I've looked over the, what Lynn has sent me and we talk and have talked about it. Okay. Mahalo. Mahalo everyone for your comments. Um, I think now that Commissioner Kyoho Kalole has so um, generously offered to help us move this along that maybe he and I can team up to what, what I think we're gonna have to start doing is we have to start presenting to the commission uh, of Kapilani Park to know whether we can get this even on the list of possible things um, for Kapilani Park and also through um, Ala Moana Kaka'ako Neighborhood Board and sort of approval from DPR to assure that, yes, we can actually move towards. And like you said, we can worry about money right after that's done, that we can actually use the space. Um, everybody okay with that? Any objections? All right, so we'll work on that, come back with something to discuss for the next meeting. Is there any um, last comments on anything on agenda item number eight? For any of the items, Ba'a, Ava, opening festival or closing ceremony. And sorry, to be clear, regarding Kapi Oleni Park and um, Magic Island as ceremonies for anything, there was never really major concern for the single day, but um, the multiple day is something that they think we might have a harder time passing through, but we'll work on that. Awesome. Okay. I am going to. It's already 4.18 and I think our next discussion is going to take us a, a decent amount of time. So what I'm going to do is defer that to the next meeting and let Chair Ka'ana'ana have that when he comes back. Uh, and so I'm going to move on to uh, public testimony on agenda items. If there's any member of the public who would like to testify on any of the agenda items, please turn your camera on and unmute yourself at this time. Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna move on to agenda item number seven, which are announcements. I don't have any announcements. Um, does anybody have an announcement they would like to make? Any of the commissioners? Okay, moving down to the next meeting, agenda item number 13, June 21st, 2021, uh, Malia will send updated Behenna schedule for the next six months. Uh, Commissioner Lum will follow up on the sunset of commissioners and uh, letters to extend to extended selected by the governor. I think I might be reading that wrong. Um, okay, if anybody has anything else, I will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Commissioner Salah, just to clarify, oh, um, yes, there are three positions that were designated by the governor and those are coming to a close. I believe, Jamie, correct me if I'm wrong but in August. And so that's what Jamie's gonna follow up on. Thank you, Malia. Commissioner Lum, you had anything? Oh, just uh, just a uh, clarification. Um, because the governor hasn't signed um, the bill yet. So technically it's June 30th, 
but um, I know that the Office of uh, Boards and Commissions has indicated that um, when the governor passes that, then the three positions that are, um, because everyone else, besides the three that are designated by the governor, everyone is by virtue of, you know, uh, being in the legislature or, you know, departments, et cetera, or different organizations. So um, they will issue new letters once the governor signs, um, extending the commission to August 31st, 2025. So, but I, yeah. I'll follow up on that, make sure that's going to happen. Is that, Commissioner Lam, sorry, go ahead. is that Commissioner Ben, Benham, Commissioner Bento, and myself? Correct. Mahalo. Hey, Mahalo, Commissioner Lam and Malia. Um, if there are no other comments, I will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved to Silva. Mahalo. Mr. Bento, and Margaret, can we approve by the raising of hands in the in the in the camera view? All in favor of adjourning the meeting? Sure, uh, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> we're adjourning the meeting at 4:21 p.m. Mahalo, everyone, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Mahalo, Commissioner Salah. Mahalo, everybody. Mahalo, 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 Mahal